The Blood Diner. First they greet you, then they eat you. No one under 17 admitted. You're watching my good fiend, Roger Walker, on Slasher Pepper. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> You can see I still haven't taken down the Frank Noka poster. I'm too lazy to do so, so I'm not gonna do it. It's the movie that the show is based on in terms of you know, uh, and these days we care a lot about our and so do I. It's the movie that the show is based on in terms of uh, of design and stuff. You know, you got the thing um, over here with the Dr. Burr Diner and, and stuff like that. I mean, the sign is basically just a poster for Blood Niner. So it's it's the movie this show is based on, sorta. Of. And I did not review it on the show. In fact, I did not even see it until yesterday. Welcome to another episode at the Dr. Pepper Diner. Let's open this baby right up. Let's start off by reading the synopsis on IMDb. Two brothers are entrusted by their uncle to uphold the ritualistic cannibalism of the ancient cult of Shitar. In order to do so, they have to prepare a feast of sacrifice for the resurrection of their goddess. Which, uh, I did not read the synopsis before watching this yesterday. I kind of was just looking for uh, a cheesy 80s movie to watch and, and all of a sudden I was like, oh shit, I haven't seen this one yet, so I've been meaning to watch it and the show is based on it, so I gotta see it. And I watched it and I loved it. The reason I mentioned this after the plot is because I had no idea it was about some ritual stuff, you know? I thought it was just gonna be like a, a sort of a slasher, more standard slasher film uh, that takes place in a diner, but actually it's not. It's filled with random scenes that you don't see coming at all, which makes it a big surprise. For example, you get to meet these two girls in the diner. Next up, you, you think you're gonna get to know these characters, you know? You think the character's gonna be fleshed out and all, because the next scene is naked aerobics with, with those characters, so you're like, okay. We're gonna get to know these characters. And while they're doing naked aerobics, some dude with a president mask shows up and shoots them all. What? It comes out of nowhere. And I love it. There's also a scene where two nephews come to show up uh, with like disguise and stuff. And they try to get into a club, but they don't have an ID on them. So one of the secu security guards at the entrance of the club asks, do you have your ID? So what do the nephews do? They throw him on the road and there's a bouncing car, coincidentally, coming his way and smashes his face and all the people that were there are not not even worried you know what they do? they start laughing I'm not even making this up but like it's it's so filled with like random crap but I love it so much for that what I also really didn't get was the opening it comes with a warning like it's gonna be really graphic but in the end it's not even that graphic, you know? Like even movies like Maniac don't have a, a warning at the beginning, so Blood Diner really shouldn't have a warning <laughs> either, I think at least. The casting is really great too, because in the beginning there's actually a flashback from the two nephews uh, when they were younger and when their uncle dies. The younger nephews actually look identical, almost. Especially the dude with the black hair, and I think his name was Mikey. They look really similar, like it's actually the same person. It's a very unpredictable film, you have no idea what's gonna happen next and especially not how it's gonna end. The ending, it's a little disappointing. I don't know what I would rather have as an ending though. But to me, the ending was, was kind of disappointing. And maybe that's also kind of because of the design of Shiba. Shiba doesn't really look uh, <laughs> good in my taste, you know. She doesn't really look like a goddess. Um, so that's that's really what bugs me the most about the film. The uncle comes back to life and at first I thought, oh, he's probably gonna be like a cool zombie or something. But he ends up being a jar, <laughs> a brain in a jar with eyes. And somehow that brain was in his, in his skull when they dig him up. So, like, stuff like that is something I've never seen before in another horror movie. Or movie in general. So that's why I love it so much. It's very original, very unpredictable, keeps you on the edge of this, your seat. There's always something to enjoy in the film. You never get bored for a second. So with that being said, I'm gonna give Blood Diner 8.5 Dr. Peppers out of 10. Absolutely love this film. If you have not seen it, I can definitely recommend this one to you. You definitely need to check it out. 
It's awesome. I should have checked it out way sooner myself. And so do you now. See ya. You're pissing me off, Roger. It's gonna be wild tonight.